Hola amigos! This is uh, Jared Miller coming back at you. I was going to share a couple of uh, different techniques. Um, I saw a good friend of mine, Paul, doing some spinning the other day and he was kind of playing around some things and so I was going to share some techniques with some, some of the same sort of stuff that he was working with. So I'm just going to kind of dive on into those. Um, the first thing I wanted to kind of go over is he was doing a three beat weave and then basically pausing it kind of on the side so where you would have one nunchuck on one plane, the wall plane in front of you, and your other nunchuck on the wall plane that's on the side of you. So you kind of end up like this, to where it was like, ended up like this. So they're on different planes, but they're still spinning in the same direction at this point. So um, what I was telling him was that from that, you can basically do what's called an, an atomic spin. Um, and I learned a lot of that actually from Poi and spending a good deal of time with uh, Troy Bonenkamp, who's actually really, really good at this stuff. I'm not quite as good at explaining this as uh, he is, but I'll do my best here. Um, so basically what it is, is if you kind of imagine the old uh, science picture of an atom, you know, with the electrons kind of spinning around, it's the same sort of idea in your head. But basically what it is, is you're going to have to start one nunchuck or poi, whatever prop you're going to be using, on the vertical plane in front of you. And I like to go um, forward or down, whatever you want to call it. So that's how I start. And then your other stick, or you know, again, whatever you're using, is going to be on the horizontal plane. Um, and so basically where it comes from is if you imagine a circle, there's always going to be two halves naturally. You're going to have, for this purpose, we're going to have a top half and then a bottom half. Um, and so when you imagine the picture, basically what you have to do is when the rope is coming at you, the other of one, the other rope has to be on the same half of the circle. So if this is on this half, then this one needs to be also coming at you. So if the rope is coming at me and that's where I want to cross my points, then this one also has to be coming at me. Um, and the reason for that is, is again, even though they're not changing directions, if they're on opposite halves of the circle, they're basically opposing. So um, while the direction hasn't changed, they will not work together. So, and again, showing you here. So now showing you this, on, on the top side, the rope is going away from me here. But if this side is spinning towards me on this side, what happens is, is they, is they collide and they crash. You can't really do anything with that. I mean, you can change to some different tech stuff, of course, but, um, and so, but then if you look at it here, to where on the bottom half, the rope or the chuck is coming at me. So the same sort of thing here, where this stick is coming at me, they will work together. And again here, not even changing direction, just moving them to an opposite half of the circle, and bam, they collide, they don't work. So that's the whole principle of all of this, is that you have to make sure that where the ropes are spinning, and that's the point that you want to cross for your, for your two planes, that they have to be going the same direction. So again, going on the top side. So now where that comes into play is, so see how the rope is going away from me again? To do the top side of it, you basically have to do the side of the stick here where it's on the outside of it to where it's going away from me here. So what that means is you actually have to cross. And see again, they still work. You just have to make sure your split time is there. And again, coming down to the bottom. So again, I haven't changed direction. You basically just change the location to where the ropes are still traveling at the same spot and it'll work. Um, and so there's basically a couple different points. You can kind of go here. You can go here. Oop. Timing is critical. Um, so back down to the bottom and then you can also do the reverse side here. Um, and there's a number of different points. You can kind of play with that. I'm just kind of showing you the basic three for the idea that I'm kind of kind of relate here. Um, and so that comes into the move that Paul was doing, was when you're doing the freebie weave and you pause your planes, you basically already got it set up to that, to the outside atomic spin. So basically what you'll do is once you get your timing to where it's split, you basically just bring your wrist down and now you're doing that atomic spin. See how that works? And so then what's cool about that is once you get comfortable with all your points, it's so you know that you can transfer as long as the rope is heading the same direction. I can go here with it, so now I'm here, and then take my other hand and cross back over with it to where it's there. I can pull this hand out of it again and continue to preview weave where we were. <coughs> so you basically start from paused to atomic spin, uh, atomic spin there, Transfer across, transfer across, back out, and back around. Um, and so again, you know, you can kind of do a lot of a lot of funky things with it. Um, and there's ways to go forward and backwards. Um, you know, you can 
probably play with forward and reverse grip, although I'm sure reverse grip gets really crazy. Um, I have only practiced really front grip and uh, just a few things that I have. Um, this isn't really necessarily a move that's always the easiest to throw into your uh, flow, but when you can find those spots, it looks awesome and it's kind of like a mind better to people that are watching it. Um, so that's kind of that take on that. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to go over real quick was just uh, some different transitions that I like to do for the uh, spiral hand wrap or the hand wrap, whatever you want to call it. Um, there's just a couple different methods that I like among the giant plethora of different things you can do, but um, basically the hand wrap is this, which I know I'm sure a lot of you already know. Uh, the big trick with this one, especially with nunchucks, is to just keeping the you know your the hand the sticks in your hands to um, work with each other, so that way you've got to kind of kind of uh, pulled away from uh, the other two that are going in front of you so that way they don't collide and screw up everything you're trying to do. Um, but basically, <clears throat> there's a couple different things I like to do. Uh, I want to consider this um, to get kind of semi-technical as a chasing pattern where one stick is following the other. So basically, anytime that you're spinning and you're having that chasing pattern, you can basically kind of wiggle this in there. So there's a ton of different things you can do. Um, so for example, you got your 3B weave, which is a chasing pattern where one is following the other. Basically, what you get, you know, at, at to a middle point, you can keep uh, doing these fire hand wraps. And as you can see, I can go just kind of bouncing back and forth doing one half of a, a 3B weave sort of fountain. And as you can see, it's basically like you're doing like a 1.5 because um, I'm never actually changing direction. So if I'm doing it one way, I'm always going forward. If I'm doing it the other way, I'm always going reverse. So then just kind of show you going in reverse. I'm showing you uh, forward again, aren't I? Again, I guess that more applies to turning. So when you're doing like, if you were doing your turning um, 3B weave pattern, once you do it on one side, you can keep doing it the same direction. So I'm constantly going forward, even though I'm changing directions, because basically it takes care of the half of the reversal because of the fact that you're bouncing it. So you've already reversed it, so all you have to do is complete your spin <coughs> to get back to the other side. So again, I'm going forward, going forward, going forward, because this takes care of the reversal that would normally be happening. Um, and again, if you're going in reverse, uh, it's kind of hard to approach. Like that. So as you can see, I'm still spinning, but uh, the reverse will get taken care of, so um, I don't actually have to worry about it. So that's another kind of cool little thing you can do with it. Um, if you can do like your <coughs> um, kind of opposite anti-spin diamond or box pattern, like this sort of thing, you can throw that in there as you would go to rewind right there to do the repeating pattern. As you spin it, you just meet your hands in the middle and reverse the direction. Which can be a little bit uh, funky with nunchucks just because again you have so much room for the sticks to run into each other. Versus ploy where there's a more minimal contact space. Um, another one that I like to do kind of comes off if you're, uh, if you're familiar with the windmill, um, which is this guy. You can basically do it there because it's another chasing pattern. So you can do your front and backwards. And since you're doing a chasing pattern the whole way through the motion, you can also do it behind you as long as you just basically pause it. So you're here, do a hand wrap, wrap it. Other direction. <laughs> Sometimes I have to think. <clears throat> um, and you can also do this in a uh, spinning pattern. So if you're here, you can go here. Together. 
Sounds a little weird, but yeah, you kind of see where I'm going with it. Um, that one takes a little bit more play. Took a little half turn. I didn't wind it. Um, there's another one uh, you can do, um, kind of that I learned from doing the three beat weave pattern, where you're doing that sort of aerial. Um, basically, you do that so you do your first one, you pop it, and then as you catch it, you just wrap into it again. Which can be a lot to do for your hands because you're basically trying to catch, get kind of readjusted, and prepare to open your fingers again to do your wrap. So it can be, uh, it can be a little tricky. Yeah, but those are just uh, a few of the ones that I like to do, I like to kind of share with you, maybe kind of give you a little bit of uh, an idea, some inspiration, you know, kind of whatever you can take from it. Um, but if you have any, any questions or any ideas, or if you learn a new move, uh, definitely share it with me, man. <laughs> um, but definitely, if you want anything explained further in depth, uh, just uh, let me know. Thanks.